Don't forget to be grateful to others. Under no circumstances should you harbor hatred or look down on people. Ever since I can remember, my mom raised me with these words. Although I can say I grew up in a privileged environment, these words helped me get along well with those around me. I never could have imagined that such an event would await someone like me. My name is Michael. When I was two, my parents divorced and I was taken in by my mom. My dad was apparently careless with money and the child support payments stopped coming soon after, leading to a complete loss of contact. Because of this, my household had to get by on just my mom's salary. To be honest, we were poor. We lived in a cheap, run-down apartment, and my mom always looked for the cheapest items when shopping. But I never heard her utter a word of resentment towards my dad. Don't you hate dad? When I asked, my mom seemed to ponder for a moment. Well, at first I did resent your father. After all, he promised to pay child support and then just disappeared. But one day, I realized that harboring hatred gets you nowhere. I thought it was better to be grateful for the people who support me now and live life positively. She said with a smile. Even though I was only in an elementary school, I thought my mom, who managed to change her mindset, was a strong person. At the same time, I wanted to be like her. Until then, I had always envied my friends who could afford expensive games and resented my circumstances for being poor. But after hearing my mom's story, I changed my way of thinking. I stopped comparing myself to others. Instead, I started to value my friends and everyone around me more. As a result, people started to treat me kinder than before. I made friends who would help me out when I was in trouble. Especially in terms of studies, I received a lot of help. I couldn't afford to go to supplemental classes due to financial reasons, and my mom was working from morning till night, so there were hardly any chances to ask her questions. Instead, my friends would teach me during breaks what I didn't understand. Maintaining high scores on tests was clearly thanks to my friends. Thanks for everything. I would say, and my friends would respond, teaching others actually helps me understand better too, so I'm thankful as well. Looking back, I really think they were great friends. Even after entering junior high, my grades were among the top in my year. But when it came time to decide on a career path, I chose to work. I wanted to ease my mom's burden as much as possible. At the time, my mom worked at a convenience store early in the morning and took a cleaning job at night. She was literally working all the time, sparing no time for sleep. There were times she was so exhausted that she fell asleep on the couch. It was clear even to a child like me that she was pushing herself too hard. I wanted to earn money as soon as possible to help my mom out. Both my teacher and mom were against my decision to work right after junior high. My mom, in particular, was worried about my future and urged me to continue my education. You should at least go to high school. The salary is different, and it can affect promotions at some companies. Don't worry about the cost of tuition. She persuaded me many times, but my resolve didn't waver. I'd rather work than study. I asserted strongly, and finally, my mom respected my wishes. If you feel that strongly about it, I'll respect your decision, Michael. And so, I was set to enter the workforce earlier than my classmates. There weren't many companies hiring junior high graduates, but I managed to get an offer from a local factory. Since it wasn't within commuting distance, I had to start living on my own. Now it's time for me to stand on my own two feet and make my way in the world. Having been hired, I was determined to work hard and was eager to start. The job I was assigned was manufacturing parts like screws. At first, the work was a series of unfamiliar tasks. There were times I felt down after making mistakes, but thinking of my mother's hardships, I realized this was nothing and worked desperately. My efforts gradually earned me recognition from my boss, David. 
I received a raise and finally was able to send money home to my mother. Michael, you've really grown up. I'll use it wisely. The first time I sent money home, my mother's eyes welled up a little. I felt warm inside, knowing I had finally managed to do something filial. But that wasn't the only good thing about working. I made friends with whom I got along well at work. Among them, I became close with a female employee named Emily. Emily and I were not only hired at the same time, but were also middle school graduates. Moreover, we hit it off quickly because we both were raised in single parent households. Emily was incredibly kind and considerate. Not only that, but she also had a bright personality, always smiling. Her smile lifted me up even when I was feeling down about mistakes. Without her, I would have felt lonely, being among the few employees of similar age. Half a year after we met, we started visiting each of her's homes on our days off. Spending time with someone I clicked with was incredibly fulfilling. Before I knew it, I had developed feelings for Emily. I even took her to my hometown. My mother quickly became close with Emily as well. Since the divorce, my mother had been buried in work and her interactions with female friends had decreased. It's been a while since I've had such a fun chat with someone. Thanks for introducing me to Emily. My mother looked as if she had reverted to her younger self, her eyes sparkling. It was the first time I had seen my mother look so lively. Thus, Emily, my mother, and I began to meet regularly. Sometimes, the three of us went out and had a great time. But that wasn't all. I took Emily to a special place. It was a free tutoring center where I volunteered. The center offers free educational support to children who can't afford tutoring due to financial reasons. Shortly after moving, I found a volunteer recruitment flyer in my mailbox. I've had experiences where friends helped me with my studies. In the same way, I thought it would be great if I could be of help to someone else, so I applied. As a volunteer, I was teaching math to elementary school students on some days. Teaching isn't easy, but it's very rewarding. When a child who previously couldn't score 50% on a test gradually improved and got 100%, I was as happy as if it were my own achievement. Above all, hearing a child say, I used to hate math, but I like learning it from Michael, made me incredibly happy. About a year into volunteering, when they were looking for literature teacher, I invited Emily to try. She has high communication skills and is good at explaining things, so I thought she would be perfect. Fortunately, Emily showed interest. After trying out teaching once, she immediately became popular with the children and was quickly hired. Since then, going to the tutoring center together on Sundays became our routine. Both my private and work life were going splendidly. However, pet falls often wait where you least expect them. About two years after I started working, a company that regularly placed large orders went bankrupt. My company was hit by the fallout and our performance plummeted. The company began considering layoffs and being middle school graduates, Emily and I were among those targeted. I felt like I understood why my mother was so worried about me being a middle school graduate. However, David opposed our layoffs. You both have become valuable assets to the company now, a significant part of our workforce. I want to avoid layoffs at all costs. He said, negotiating with the higher-ups on our behalf. As a result, the two of us were spared from being laid off. But there was a condition. We had to find new clients. The deadline was two months. If we couldn't find any by then, we should be prepared to lose our jobs. I'm sorry I couldn't do more to protect you. David said apologetically, but I was grateful just to have this chance. Since I have been working diligently, I was chosen to handle sales. I was determined to secure new clients. Initially, I was enthusiastic, 
but it turned out to be more challenging than expected. Being new to the task, I struggled to pitch effectively at first. Even after practicing with Emily and David and getting the hang of it, no company seemed interested and I gradually felt more pressured. I visited dozens of companies, trying to build relationships, but all were unsuccessful. The fatigue was overwhelming. Before I knew it, a month had passed. Not just my job, but Emily's as well, was on the line. It was getting critical to secure a contract soon. With a do-or-die attitude, I approached a certain company. I passionately explained the strengths of my company to an employee there, Sarah. It went better than any other attempt. Sarah's response was very positive. Your factory may not be the largest, but your production system is very well organized. We wouldn't have any issues with placing large orders. That's right, that's our company's strength. I responded, leaning in and emphasizing our advantages. For the first time, I felt a glimmer of hope. After reviewing the materials I brought, Sarah smiled warmly. Your company's excellent production system is attractive to us. Could you present to our CEO Anderson and an efficient employee named Brian? If they like it, we'll contract with your company. Really, I would appreciate that opportunity. When I expressed my joy, Sarah continued, however, there are other candidate companies as well, and they will present on the same day. We will only contract with the one that impresses us the most, so there's no guarantee that you will be chosen. Understood. Given this situation, I'm determined to deliver the best presentation and secure the contract. I immediately went back to the company and explained everything to Emily and David. Both were determined to help in any way possible to secure the contract. From that day, we immersed ourselves in preparing for the presentation. From creating materials to send to the company in advance to practicing the presentation, there was a lot to do. All these tasks were new to us and challenging, and sometimes we worked overtime. But there was no room for complaints. Not only our jobs, but also the fate of the company was at stake. Whenever the work didn't progress as hoped, Emily encouraged me. We'll surely succeed if we persevere here. I'm with you all the way. Her advice during the document preparation was invaluable. Her insights were precise and greatly helpful. I was grateful for the numerous times she joined me for presentation practice. She pointed out things like voice tone and where to look, details I wouldn't have noticed on my own. The children at the free tutoring center also gave me hidden strength. Their dedication to their studies unknowingly motivated me. A certain fourth grader at an elementary school declared he would score 100% on their next math test and was studying seriously. Seeing such effort made me think, if he can work this hard, so can I. Motivated, I dedicated time to preparing for the presentation at home after the free tutoring sessions were over. I finished sending the preliminary documents to the prospective company and received approval after rehearsing the presentation in front of my boss. Then came the day of the presentation. Since you've practiced so much, you'll be fine. Emily encouraged me as I headed to the prospective company. In the waiting room, I was quite nervous. Taking deep breaths helped me regain some calm. Right, let's check the presentation materials one more time. I took out my laptop and opened the saved documents. Just as I was about to check, the door to the waiting room opened and a man wearing an expensive looking suit entered. Nice to meet you, my name is Brian. His name sounded familiar. He was the employee who would be attending my presentation. When I last met with Sarah, she mentioned at the end that he was a highly educated elite. Nice to meet you too, I'm Michael. Thank you for giving me an opportunity for presentation. I greeted him politely. For some reason, Brian started smirking. So you're Michael, still green, aren't you? I thought that it is rude to say to someone his meeting for the first time. 
I was irked inside but remembered I was also a working adult. I tried to laugh it off. Haha, <laughs> well, I am a middle school graduate after all. Brian's face turned even more disdainful. Well, a middle school dropout, you should feel grateful to be breathing the same air as me, and to think, reviewing your materials in the waiting room, huh, must be tough for someone from the bottom ring of society to land a contract. I wondered if the people with middle school graduate were so bad, and if the people who had highly educated were so great. He didn't know what he was allowed to say and what he was not allowed to say. As my irritation grew, Brian didn't stop. And to think you'd try to make a move on Sarah. Don't get ahead of yourself, he sneered. I could not understand what he was talking about. My interaction with Sarah was purely professional. My patience snapped at his barrage of insults. Just as I was about to say hold on, the door swung open. Brian, do you know who this person is? A voice followed. There stood Sarah, with an angry expression on her face. Brian remained unflinchingly arrogant. He is a bottom feeder of society, isn't he? A middle school dropout. Don't get so worked up. Sarah sighed in exasperation. You really don't understand. Michael is someone special to you, Brian. What do you mean? I asked, intrigued by her words. Brian has been looking for a new company to supply parts for his project since the company he was dealing with went bankrupt. Michael's factory is one of the candidates. Sarah explained, then looked at Brian. Brian's project is a major one, critical to our company's future. In essence, Brian's career is on the line too. That's why you were eagerly looking forward to today's presentation, right? You were excited because you thought Michael's company had the best preliminary materials. Brian turned pale. You mean, he's the one who prepared those documents? Jess, the very Michael you were mocking. Brian was dumbfounded. As this exchange unfolded, it was time for the presentation. I had been working hard for this day. Deciding to put the exchange in the waiting room behind me, I focused on the presentation. Faced with CEO Anderson, I was nervous, but I managed to perform well, just as I had practiced. After watching all the company's presentations, CEO Anderson said, Michael's company was the best. Let's go with his company for our new partnership. Brian agreed with the decision. Thank you very much. I stood up energetically from my chair to express my gratitude. This meant my company, Emily, and everyone else would be saved. I felt truly glad for all the hard work I had put in. After the meeting, Brian came over to apologize. I'm really sorry for looking down on you earlier. The materials you prepared in your presentation were excellent. Being a middle school graduate doesn't matter. You are clearly a capable person. He admitted to misunderstanding my interaction with Sarah, thinking I was making inappropriate advances after seeing us talk happily. Seeing Brian repeatedly apologize, my anger subsided. No, it's okay now. As long as you understand, it's fine. Sarah also looked relieved. This incident has made it clear that educational background doesn't matter. Michael, you researched our company thoroughly for your presentation and the materials you prepared were outstanding. We look forward to working with you. Likewise, thank you. In a friendly atmosphere, I left the prospective company. When I returned to my company and announced our success, everyone was overjoyed. Emily was even moved to tears. It's all thanks to the support you've given me, Emily. Thank you. I went to Emily to express my gratitude. She modestly said, it's not like that, it's all thanks to your effort, but I knew that without Emily, that quality of presentation wouldn't have been possible. I decided never to forget the support she had given me. Thus, our company's performance recovered, and the threat of layoffs for Emily and me was averted. It was great to return to working energetically at the company. Emily and I continued to be in charge of the project with a new client company. 
As for Brian, he was removed from the project. Apparently, CEO Anderson had overheard his derogatory comments towards me. In GERD, CEO Anderson reassigned him to a smaller project. It turns out CEO Anderson himself had risen from a middle school graduate to the position of CEO and couldn't tolerate educational discrimination. Sarah was assigned to lead the new project instead. According to Sarah, Brian was truly remorseful and was working hard in his new role. Emily, Sarah, and I worked together to grow the business. Now, our companies are bringing significant benefits to each other. There was also significant progress in my personal life. Around this time, I confessed my feelings to Emily. Her response was a joyful yes, and we officially became a couple. Both of our parents have given their blessing. I'm currently contemplating when to propose marriage. We still attend a free tutoring center together. Not only that, but Sarah also showed interest in the tutoring center and has started working as a volunteer staff member. She quickly became popular with the children, as she loves them. Indeed, the child who had declared he would score 100% on their test actually achieved it. From them, I was reminded once again of the importance of hard work. Looking back on my life, there have been many challenges. But I've managed to get through a thanks to the help of those around me. I plan to continue working hard in both my professional and personal life, never forgetting to be grateful to those around me.